QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Set up new bank feed test company file. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are on the desktop with the QuickBooks desktop software icon, which we downloaded from the Intuit website, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks. If you don't have access to the software, then you might be able to get the 30 day free trial. The best way to search for that is to, rather than go into the Intuit website directly, just type into your favorite browser, QuickBooks desktop 30 day free trial. Make sure that you're looking at the desktop version as opposed to the online version because that's what we'll be using here. Now, when we think about the desktop version of the software, we can kind of compare it to Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word being something that we generally think of as having downloaded the program onto our computer. And then we open up documents in the Microsoft Word program. That's going to be similar with the QuickBooks desktop because we can have multiple company files, which is great for like a bookkeeping service and it's great for practice. Those multiple company files we can think of as analogous to the Word documents that we can open up in the software of the QuickBooks. Now it gets a little bit more complex with QuickBooks because when you think about a Word document, they're not as large in nature. So if you wanted to back up your Word documents, then you could just make a copy of them somewhere else. But when you have a lot of data in a QuickBooks file, then you also want to zip the files when you try to store them or make a copy of them oftentimes. Therefore, we're gonna have the QuickBooks software, we're gonna have the data file, and then we're also gonna have backup files. So you can have three kind of icons you're gonna have to be dealing with. And note that if you only have one company file, that's pretty easy to deal with because you're always gonna be working in one company file, although you still wanna make sure that you know where the data file is and that you understand where the backup files are. If you're a bookkeeper, you might be working in multiple company files, in which case you have to organize those company files in a similar way as organizing your Word documents, which can be a little bit chaotic, as you know, with organizing anything like a file cabinet or anything else. And if you're just practicing, then once again, you're going to have multiple files, most likely, and you're going to want to organize those files so it can get kind of cluttered. So the first thing we're going to do is start up a new company file. I want to save the company file into a folder, and then we'll get going with the bank feeds. My goal when we're starting the company file is to imagine we're going to have a company that we're going to be connecting directly to the bank feeds and try to build most of our financial statements from the bank feeds and uh, that will take a certain industry or type of company in order to do that we'll dive into that in more detail shortly as i open the company file i'm going to make this other folder where i want the company file information to go i want to have a special designated folder where i want the company file to be i'm going to call it a data file so this is going to be the data file that's where i want it to go I want to make sure I have that designated folder because if I just put it on the desktop, which is probably the first thought that most people would have, then it's going to clutter the desktop because it puts not only the, the file in there, but all this other junk in there. So you want it to give it its own folder for the data files so you don't have a mess. All right, let's open up QuickBooks. And so we're going to double click on the software, opening it up. Note that if you have been working in another file, such as I have been working in another file, then it might open automatically to that other file. So oftentimes it's useful to close this file when you're gonna start a new company. You don't have to because you could go to the dropdown and just say that you wanna start a new company from here. But oftentimes it's, it's nice to do it from the open screen. So if you have another company file that opens, I will typically close that company file 
and that will take us to the intro screen. If uh, this is your first time opening up QuickBooks, it'll automatically take you to the intro screen here, typically. Now also note that the size of the icons that you have, you could change that by changing your settings. So if I go into my settings and type in settings here and search for my settings, I'm gonna actually just change the size of my display screen. I currently have it at 150 at this point. But when I first start this, I'm gonna change it back down to the recommended size because sometimes when I first open up the screen over here, the the uh, the first window is a pop-up that kind of gets distorted. Everything else from there works great if I was to zoom into the screen. Also note that when you're zooming in and out of the screen, it usually works pretty good even when you have the software open. But if something isn't scaling right, you can close the program and open the program back up. So I'm going to minimize this. We will I will use that scaling option to kind of make this a little bit larger for people. And again, if you want to do that on your side, just normally that's you know the easiest way or one nice easy way to scale up your the size now if i start a new company file we got a new company file here or you can open or restore a company file here now this would be one if we already had the company file open a sample file these are great tools that quickbooks has put together like some sample files that you can practice with and they already have data in them so you can kind of navigate around. What we're gonna do is start a new company file and imagine that we're gonna put it together with the bank feeds. Up top, we have the, the files that have been opened recently. So these are kind of the shortcut to get to those files that have been opened recently. This is a convenient tool, but it also uh, leads people to kind of forget where the company file is at. So even though the software opens directly to your company file each time, you want to know where it is at so that uh, if there's a problem and you have to reinstall the program or something, you could find the company file. If you hover over these items, it gives you that map right there. And so I would copy that map, possibly screenshot it and find your company file. Make sure you know where it is. We can create a new company file either here or with the drop down file and new company. That's what we're going to do now. So then it says, uh, what does creating a company file require? For creating company file, uh, you need to have an Intuit account, which would provide you better control of your data, uh, superior fraud protection, one account for all Intuit products. So Intuit, you know, it's getting larger and larger. They got a suite of products and so on that could be useful together oftentimes or possibly depending on your circumstances. Who are you recreating, creating the company file for? For myself, I'm the admin. So my email will be uh, used to create an Intuit account, which will be used to access all Intuit products for someone else. I'm creating the company file on behalf of the admin. I'm gonna say the second one just for our practice problem. Other options, open existing file. This is kind of redundant. You wouldn't go here if you wanted to do that. You would have gone somewhere else. Uh, convert a Quicken file. Now Quicken is not QuickBooks. Quicken used to be owned by QuickBooks, but now I think it's owned by somebody else. But uh, it's a it's another kind of accounting software. So if you already had started accounting software in another company file, whether that be personal or business, and note that QuickBooks can be used for personal accounting. It's basically a similar kind of process here. So you know I use it for personal accounting too, as well. So uh, you can you might be able to import the Quicken file. Now, if you already had past data in another accounting software, your, your options then are going to be, do I want to, to upload all the prior year data into QuickBooks? Or do I want to just start from a certain date in QuickBooks going forward? In which case, I don't need to import all the data from the prior file. I just need to import the stuff I need, which is going to be the beginning balances going forward and then possibly customers and vendors and that kind of stuff. So we have a practice problem that goes into that in a little bit more detail in another section or course if you want to kind of dive into that in more detail. We're going to be starting a new company file from scratch in this case. So convert another accounting software and then you could have an advanced setup. We're just going to go to the standard start process. So let's start it up. Start it up. Okay, so here we have the basic information, anything with the red asterisk, that's a required field. Everything else isn't required, but might be something that you would want to put in place because it might be needed to populate certain forms such as invoices and so on. So I'm just gonna call it a generic business name, bank 
I'm gonna call it bank feed practice file. It's gonna be like a, a business file. I'm gonna imagine we're basically kind of like more of a gig worker for the most part, although I will expand on that to deal with other pr uh, problems like inventory problems, accrual based problems and so on. And so then the industry that we want, I can hit the help button. QuickBooks desktop has a lot of great tools. They, they really broke out their different industries in a lot more detail, even than their online stuff right now. This is, which is quite nice because if you choose the industry, it'll give you a chart of accounts that is, that they, they think is the best chart of accounts for that particular industry. So you can look at the different industries and check out the chart of accounts. If none of these really fit you well, then you might use a generic product-based or service-based account. And the, the product-based will have like cost of goods sold and inventory as part of their accounts because you'll be selling inventory. Now, normally I would say that your best practice would be to choose the industry. If you're not familiar with QuickBooks, let, let QuickBooks give you a chart of accounts and then try to use their chart of accounts wherever you feel appropriate as you add the data, even if using bank feeds. And, and when adding new accounts, the question would be, does QuickBooks have an account? If it does, use the default account that they gave you. If they have an account, but it's not appropriate or you don't like it as much, change the name of the QuickBooks account instead of adding a new one that's very similar in name. Otherwise, you can have multiple accounts with the same name. And then if they don't have anything at all, then add a new account. And then after you've entered a month, a few months of, of data, go back into the Intuit accounts and delete the ones that you're not using, right? That's a general recommendation. But here I wanna go to other and have no accounts because I would like to show how we're gonna basically create the accounts as part of our accounting process, building everything in essence from uh, the bank feeds. So we're gonna have actually no accounts, which again, they give you a nice option to do here to do that if you want, which could be great because then you can customize your own accounts with it. So, and that could be useful, especially for personal bookkeeping uh, as well, where you might have account names that don't fit into the standard for expenses, for example. So I'm gonna say, okay, so there is that and the uh, business type, sole proprietor, uh, LLC, uh, LLP, LLC, corporation. So these are cor kind of like the legal types of the entity. The bookkeeping in terms of the double entry accounting system will basically be the same, but there's gonna be a difference you would think normally in the equity section because of the balance sheet, because a sole proprietor would have one owner which you might call then the equity section would be just capital assets minus liabilities equals the capital account or equity or owner's equity. For a partnership, you have to track multiple capital accounts in the equity section for multiple two or more partners. Then you've got the corporation, which usually uses the term retained earnings instead of a capital account or owner's equity uh, type of account. And then of course, you've got the difference between a corporation and an S corporation and so on. Uh, which which could be gen the general idea there would be that by default from a tax standpoint, you're usually considered a sole proprietor if you're just a single individual or a partnership by default. And then uh, you, might, you might try to go to a corporation at some time, but there's a problem with the corporation, which is typically going to be that if you draw money out of the corporation, then you have to, it's a dividend and you usually have taxes on dividends. So you have a double taxation problem. So then they created these other things, LLPs, LLC, S corporation to try to get the best of both worlds. And so, so of course this will line up to your tax, you know, whatever your tax stuff is to get an idea of how you should set up your business as a sole proprietorship partnership, LLC, you want to talk to a professional, but make sure that you're talking to someone who gives a neutral opinion. If you're talking to someone who, who is a professional S corporation maker, then they're probably going to try to sell you on an S corporation because they're an S corporation salesman, right? As opposed to if you pay someone just to give you advice, not to set up the S corporation, then you can, you can hopefully get some advice. That's, that's, uh, that's neutral. But in any case, I'm just going to choose sole proprietor, the email address. I'll put that in last. The EIN number is not required. You can get this on the IRS website and you might want it even if you are not a, a, uh, 
have employees. It's, a, it's an employee employer identification number. You would think then you would only need it when you have employees, but that's not necessarily the case because if you're a sole proprietor and you just do your own thing, you might work with other businesses that need to 1099 you. And if they need to 1099 you, they're gonna want your EIN number because the IRS sees you as an EI as a number. If you don't have one, you're gonna have to give them your social security number. That doesn't look professional. And now you're giving out your social security number, which isn't good. So so you so you can set up an EIN number pretty easily. It looks something like this, nine five. Uh, this is at least the structure of it. I'm just making this up. And then the phone number, 555-546-8743. This might show up on some forms, like possibly an, an invoice or something like that. So it could be useful to have, even though it's not a required field. I'm just gonna pick a random place. This is gonna be, I put all my stuff in Beverly Hills. So it's gonna be North Roxbury Drive, Beverly Hills, Cal California, 90210 in California so there it is now the general business that we're going to be setting up I'm gonna say is kind of like gig work meaning uh, that's the type of business that can be designed or put the whole books together pretty easily on just a a relying on the bank feeds situation but I will then expand on that to try to touch on the more complex scenarios when you have an accrual based system and inventory and that kind of stuff. So let me add the email and then finalize this. Okay, it takes a little bit of time to finalize. You usually get a pop-up screen. This is like a, a, a sell up type of thing. So these are things that usually cost you money to, if you wanna add on to them, get paid faster. So you can look and make recording checks simpler. We're not gonna do any of this stuff right now. So I'm just gonna close it out. So now that I'm in here, I'm gonna go back into my Windows setting. This is not part of QuickBooks. This is just my Windows setting. And my default is going to have this up at 150 of the size so that it kind of zooms in on uh, the display size here, which made this window all distorted. I'm going to maximize this. I typically like my settings here as well to be view drop down. I'm going to hide the icon bar and then I'm going to go to the view drop down and have the, the top actually view drop down, hide icon bar and open windows list. That's gonna be the default settings that we have. So we also have set up, you can see here that has been set up for us, the chart of accounts. So they gave us some basic couple accounts, even though we picked no chart of accounts by not picking an industry. And we're gonna create the chart of accounts as we enter the information from the bank feeds. Now note that it didn't ask me where the company file went. So I don't really know where the company file is at this point, which is kind of annoying. So one way to get there, and this is a little risky, but there's a couple ways to do it, but I like closing the company file. So I'm gonna to go to edit and I'm gonna close the company file. And then it's gonna take me to this window right here. And there's, there's the mapping. So if I hover over it, it's in the last thing I opened and there's the mapping. I'm gonna screenshot it. So I'm using my screen clipping thing to take a screenshot and then I'll put it in Word and I'll go find it. And so I have to have it if I wanna actually move it, so there's where it's actually located. Now, if I wanna actually move this file from wherever QuickBooks put it, because they just didn't ask me, they just put it somewhere, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to have it closed. So right now I've got the file is closed, uh, but even though QuickBooks is open, QuickBooks is open, but this file is not open, so I should be able to cut and paste or move the file wherever it's located. So they put it where, where I was working on last, the last time, I had a file open was here. So they put it to the same location. If you if you ha didn't have any other data file, they would bury it under your C drive under like an Intuit folder, I believe. But you can map it out and you can find it. Uh, use it you could just use, use your mapping here. And this of course is the C drive. It's under the user. It's under, so you can follow the map to, to find where the, the file is located and hopefully dig it out. And then I wanna move it. So here's the file. Notice it gave me all this other junk with it. Now, I think I can move the file without the other junk. So I'm just gonna put my cursor here and say Control X or right click and cut it. I'm gonna cut it, not copy it, but cut it because I wanna move it. And then I'm gonna put it into this file. I designated the data file. I'm gonna paste it right there. 
And so there it is. And then I'm going to make this large so we can see the icon. So now we have the QuickBooks software icon and then the data file. So when I open this up, it's similar to a Word document. It's similar to the Word software and the Word document. With Word documents, we typically double click on the document and that opens up the program, the document within it. We could do that here generally. You could double click on the on this icon and it's gonna open up QuickBooks and the data file within it. But usually we do that the other way around, right? We go to the we go to QuickBooks, open up QuickBooks, and then the last thing, it gives you a little thing for the last file. If you're only working in one file, it'll start to open to that file kind of automatically. So next thing just to note is that these are the two kinds of files that we have. The third type of file you got to be aware of is the backup file. And that's going to be basically a zipped file of your data file. So you're going to have to store your backup files uh, as well. And, and, and you can put them in a different folder of the backup files and just back them up nightly. And then, and then you can set up your backup files so that they delete some of the older backup files to update your backup. So we might dive into that a little bit more later. We talked about it in a prior course or prior section uh, as well. So now we've got our, our company set up. We'll continue on uh, with it in future presentations.